Hello everyone. So this week's drawing is of Beauty and the Beast. And this is kind of more of my own interpretation on it. So I had a lot of fun with this. Um, it took quite a long time to draw. Since I wasn't quite sure what I wanted in the background while, um, while I was starting out, um, I began with just the foreground. One of the challenges though was um, lighting. So I knew that in the background, I wanted there to be a light source. So um, I kind of started keeping in mind where all the shadows would have um, fallen if the, um, if the light source was in the background. But even that, I kind of took some liberties with because I didn't want them to be completely blacked out. I also kept in mind as I was working on the background, um, the position of the two characters. Because Beast is so big, and I wanted Beauty to be kind of smaller in comparison, it meant that I had to really keep in mind how to balance out the characters. So that was something else that I started to work on when I worked on the background. In order to balance out um, Beauty and the Beast and actually draw attention to Beauty, um, I had to really play with the colors on Beast. So I kept Beast very dark and subdued, so I used a lot of dark colors. His clothes, I really kept dark, so I made sure that they were this really nice dark purple, almost plum. For some reason, it actually almost looked more gray when I was working on it. And then um, for Beauty, I decided, um, since I needed to make her lighter than Beast, um, I made sure that her hair was lighter than Beast's hair was. The colors that I chose for low lights were almost too dark, so in order to blend them nicely, um, I actually worked a lot with a layering and blending process. So I laid down a layer of my darker color, and then I laid down several layers of my lighter colors in order to blend them properly. Also, I had to make sure that I chose a mid-tone, which blended fairly seamlessly into her um, low lights. Moving on to her dress, I was actually kind of disappointed that um, I didn't have a lighter pink, so uh, what I wound up doing was <clears throat> shading the dress into those um, lighter pink colors. So the underdress was supposed to be a lot lighter, the shift as it is called, and um, so I made the shadows that lightest pink that I had, and then I did her overdress in the um, in a darker pink. Once again, you have to make sure that you blend it well. So I used my light pink and I used a colorless blender to blend it. In order to push Beast more into shadow, um, his undershirt, which is supposed to be white, I really made sure that it was a nice gray color. So I used. Um, all three of my grays, I used um, a pr Prismacolor dark gray, and then I used my C1 and C3 Copic grays to seamlessly blend out everything so that it really gave a, a nice look that it was a white shirt in shadow. A quick note on color choice. Um, the colors that I chose for this drawing, um, they're actually a lot of the same colors used throughout. Um, especially in the foreground. It was very difficult to find a balance while also using colors that I had already determined that I had kind of wanted for this. In the end, I decided that um, using different um, shadow colors and stuff like that would allow the colors that I used as highlights, which are oftentimes the same colors as I used as lowlights in another section, to look more realistic and even different. So for instance, her chair, the cushion is the same, um, the highlight color is the same color as the low light of her dress. However, the shadow portion of the, of the cushion of the chair is the same color that I use for the highlight of the wood part of her chair. But because I was able to blend the colors and use different shadow colors, they look like they belong together.
Finally, I moved on to the background. Um, in order to create this kind of realistic looking setting for Beauty and the Beast, um, I had to play around a lot with my background. So, um, as I said at the beginning of the video, um, I wanted the background to be a source of light. So, here I created the window, and the window would be the source of light for this picture. So, in order to create this realistic, realistic depth, I, um, I decided to create a foreground, a midground, and a background. So, your kind of midground would be the bookcase and the windows, and the background is the garden that you see through the window. I think this creates a more interesting looking composition. So, I put minimum amounts of detailing in the background, in the, in the garden in the back. I kind of just penciled in some things and then um, used splotches to kind of represent bushes and trees. And then the middle ground is where I focused a lot more of the details in the background by, or the backdrop, by focusing on the bust and the rose and all the different books and the textures of the books. I made sure that both Beauty and the Beast characters themselves and the bookcases had plenty of textures and shading. I want to thank you guys so much for watching me design and draw my take on the classic characters Beauty and the Beast. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment below, and don't forget to subscribe.